Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. I've filmed this video like four times now, five times the charm. We're going to be taking a look at the N-Series Wielder. This is the weirdest blaster I've ever seen in my life, and I absolutely love it. Let's get into it. <music> So the Wielder is a 2024 release out of Hasbro in the new N-Series line, and it is one of the weirdest blasters ever created. One of only two completely original things besides the Infinite. And this blaster is insane. It is a four dart revolver bolt action pistol with a stock attachment point. Yeah, let's start with the design and figure out what's going on. I'm briefly gonna take the stock off and I will address the stock independently in just a moment. The design of the wielder looks so, so cool. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about this blaster's design, but it is just magnificent to look at. Look at this, look at this. The way this is set up with all these lines, that's the mark of an artist. Like it looks beautiful. The big sleek orange up at the top with like the little orange accents here and there, just this dark blue, like it's almost reminiscent of Elite, but it's just like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It really is. And they did the circuit board patterning and the plastic molding extremely well. They alternate the different types of plastic and it really gives this blaster a gorgeous look to it. The bolt just adds extra detail, the big white cylinder in the front, it all just comes together. And I love the fact that the stock attachment point is orange. That's just an extra little detail. Not to mention the shape of this blaster just looks so cool. It looks like an old fashioned laser tag gun from like the 80s, back when laser tag used to have like super cool looking guns rather than just always emulating an AR-15 in some way. This is like what they looked like. It's so fun and nostalgic. Cause I remember I used to go to laser tag arenas and they have of, like super fun looking blasters and I'd always love to see what the blaster looked like when we got there. Oh, it's just a great design overall. I love it. And the stock that it comes with actually takes away from the design. The stock looks okay independently but it is it is microscopic. I can almost hide it behind my hands. I can put my thumb on the front of the stock and my pinky on the back of the stock and comfortably hold it like this. And when it's on the blaster, the lines do not match up at all. There is literally no consistency to this at all. It looks like a separate piece. And it genuinely does. Like the shade of blue is slightly different as well. I don't understand what happened with the stock. Another interesting feature about the stock is the fact that it feels like an Alpha Strike product. It's super thin and cheap, while the blaster itself feels very thick like an old N-Strike blaster. So the inconsistency in plastic goes from front to back and it's just so weird. Just, just don't use the stock. Though this does give me the opportunity to address the new style of stock attachment, which is these two little notches on the top rather than on the bottom. And the way you detach it is with this big button on the top rather than the two little spring-loaded pegs on the bottom. And it actually does supply a more secure fit than the original N-Strike stock attachment point design. I think they did this because in theory, a stock has weight on the bottom of it. And since the only locking point is at the bottom, it causes the stock to bend back. And you do end up pushing more weight against the bottom and stocks do traditionally bend back a little bit. So instead by putting the connectors at the top, but instead by putting the connectors at the top, it provides a more secure fit and it won't bend back, which is honestly not a bad idea. And I don't mind them changing the stock since the stock attachment point is still compatible with old end strike stocks. And one last thing to note about the stock attachment point before we move on to ergonomics is the fact that it is set back really far, way further than most traditional stock attachment points. So if you put a rather short or regular feeling stock on it, the stock is substantially longer and overall is a lot more comfortable than usual, which is really nice. Like, honestly, oh my gosh, let's transition to the ergonomics so I can talk about how comfortable this thing is. This grip rocks. It's wonderful. The N-Series grip fits on this blaster perfectly. And unlike the Agility, which was kind of tight and had that weird grip guard that kind of went over here, this one is completely open and has lots of extra space if you have bigger hands than I do. So this grip probably isn't going to be cramping to anybody who wants to use it. Very smooth and filleted, nice finger troil, just like all the other N-Series blasters. Now this blaster doesn't really have a foregrip, but if you do put a stock on it and you want to use a foregrip, you can very 
comfortably just put your hand right about here and it's a very nice handhold. As for the bolt, it's a very nicely designed bolt which can easily be unscrewed. And one detail I honestly like a lot about this blaster is that it only comes with one bolt. So you can put it in the left side or the right side, completely ambidextrous. And once the bolt goes in, I never had any problems with it unscrewing, unlike the pinpoint, which I will review the pinpoint in a couple days. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a four shot revolver. So you take a dart, you load it into the front, then you take the bolt handle and pull it back. It has a spring return, so that's nice. And then you can aim it and pull the trigger once to fire. It does not have slam fire, which I'm not even surprised by because it's a bolt action thing. Another way you can fire it and how I usually fire it if I don't have a stock on it is by turning it sideways and holding the bolt from the top like this. I don't know why, I just find that really satisfying. What is it with inanimate object interrupting my video today? The prime of this blaster is really, really smooth. It's damn near perfect. It's really buttery and crispy to pull back with a nice loud click at the back due to the cylinder rotation which can be manually actuated just by pulling it back again. And as for the trigger pull, very nice trigger pull, still using a plastic spring, just like the agility. Definitely worth noting. We're gonna tactical this up and it's legal because they give me the stock point. So good with the first shot. Nailed it. So what mod potential does this blaster bring to the table? Well, just about the same amount as the agility does, probably a little bit more due to the fact that it's just a bolt action thing. So theoretically, you could give this thing a pump kit or a top prime kit just by inventing something that screws into either side and runs along this top tactical rail. Yes, it also has a tactical rail. I forgot to mention that, but I didn't think it was worth mentioning. So modding potential for this blaster is really nice. Plus the fact that it is big and it is comfortable, it is a really nicely made blaster so this is probably something you'd want to mod one interesting detail is the fact that this cylinder is the exact same geometry as the agility cylinder so you could take the agility cylinder and put it on this blaster and then have six shots and even then the agility cylinder still has wasted space so you could probably make an eight or ten dart cylinder for this blaster without too much trouble that's amazing, and I really can't wait to see when somebody does that. So do I recommend the wielder? Well, if this blaster was being sold independently, I would say, yeah, check this thing out. It's fun, it's cool, go and get one if you can. But this blaster is only available through the gear up pack, which is $25. And the only thing that you're getting besides this is the dealer and the flex. Yeah, you, you kind of got to pick your poison there. It's it's not that big of a value for your money. I mean, yeah, you're getting three relatively cool blasters, but it is still $25. You're spending it on three small blasters when you could buy one bigger one that is probably better in just about every single way than all three of them combined. But honestly, if you want this blaster, I don't think it's that big of a sacrifice to spend 25 on the gear up pack. If you want to get this blaster, I'll link it in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bye. Oh,